what I noticed is the reason there aren't a lot of people selling ephemera is because there aren't a lot of people buying ephemera. Not much I can do about that. But the one thing that I can do is talk about why ephemera is something that you can take a look at and something you can consider if you're considering using vintage in your decor. Well, if you got a dollar, well, just lousy down. Know that I got rhythm that could suit your budget found. You can take or leave me, but you ain't got much time. Cause I just keep on rolling down the line. Hey, this is Patrick with Trusty Huckster Mercantile. Welcome to my channel. If you've been following my channel at all in the last several months, you've noticed that I have taken a little bit of a turn in what I am focusing on in my vintage and antique reselling. I still like vintage, still like antiques, prefer antiques over vintage. That's okay. That's another discussion. But what I've shifted into is a lot more in ephemera. A uh, couple of reasons for this. One, I really enjoy it. It's something that I have collected and looked at for a long time and had always peppered into some of my sales in the past. What I had noticed was when I would do some of my sales, particularly if I was doing drop sales, I would put some ephemera out there and people would comment saying, oh, you find such the, you find the neatest stuff or you always have the greatest ephemera. I don't think that I have a lot of competition in that regard. Uh, in this vintage online community, there's not a lot of people who specialize in vintage ephemera. And so it did end up becoming one of those areas that I really enjoyed and kind of got the double benefit. I realized it was super simple to ship. And so as this is a side hustle for me and uh, life you know, tends to take over, I no longer had the time or the resources to be able to ship crystal and porcelain and all the, the breakable stuff that I still like to sell and still have available, but I'm just kind of shifting my focus. But what I noticed is the reason there aren't a lot of people selling ephemera is because there aren't a lot of people buying ephemera. Not much I can do about that. But the one thing that I can do is talk about why ephemera is something that you can take a look at and something you can consider if you're considering using vintage in your decor. And I've talked about this in really general terms in the past, and I kind of pepper that in as I find different pieces and talk about you know, creating vignettes and doing all these different things. But sometimes people need the specific examples. So this video is going to highlight what you can do by visiting the dollar store, whether it's Dollar Tree, whatever variation of inexpensive discount store that you have available to you. Almost all of them will have some level of discount frames, uh, pre-made frames that are available for, you guessed it, a dollar. Although I think my Dollar Tree is now a dollar 25, but that's okay. That's That name doesn't roll off your tongue as easily. But again, you're dealing with things that are available for a buck. When you find or you are interested in vintage or antique pieces of paper and you don't really know what to do with them, something as simple as a $1 frame can make all the difference. So I'm going to showcase a couple of pieces. I literally went to the store, did not have any plan of action. I just walked in and just grabbed a bunch of frames, came home, and then just started figuring out what I could do with them. You probably want to do it the other way. Maybe you find a really cool piece, you find the right frame, but I just wanted to showcase as variety. So I considered having like before and afters, but that would require me to buy two of everything. And I didn't think that far ahead. So one of the things that I had available, there's actually two, uh, identical versions of this. So one has a natural uh, uh, coloration and then one has the black coloration. And these are available in the framing there uh, in the frame area. There is no glass to these. There's a little easel on the back with a, with a cord so it doesn't swing all the way out. But then if you look, what there's on here is simply a clip. And so when you purchase it, it's all shrink wrapped. You get something, I think there's a picture that's already in there that to showcase what this is for, but you have a very nice size piece that you can then take a very nice size piece of art and be able to put in. So this happens to be a Victorian trade card. Uh, you can see at the bottom is for Kenton baking powder. What's nice about some of these trade cards is it's embossed, so there's some nice texture to it, but there's nothing printed in the back. So the fact that it's all on the front means you can put it into a frame and you're not really losing you know, some of the art. So you literally, open up the clip, try and do this in reverse, which is easier said than done, try and center it. And you know, there's really no rules. The only thing you probably wanna consider is putting something in that is, is a nice representation of this size. If you were to put something really small in it, it would be a, a waste of space. 
So it's one of those cases that uh, you might need to play around with different sizes, different scale. It's going to, you know, it's going to test your creativity, test your aesthetic eye. But, you know, even the, the simplest among us will realize something like this will look better in that kind of a frame than something like this. Although that doesn't look bad, but it's this is very small for a very large piece. So the larger piece looks a little bit nicer. Uh, you also want to take into consideration the coloration. So I have a paler piece in this trade card, which looks nice against the lighter background. But then for the other, the black one, what I actually pulled, this is not a trade card. I try to create a, a variety of pieces because, you know, vintage ephemera comes in all shapes and sizes. This literally is the pay envelope for Mary Mather from Sterling Silk Company in Pennsylvania. So it actually was a little envelope, showed right on there what her earnings were, what her deductions were. And when you when you hold it and clip it in, you do lose the details of those, um, the, uh, what's underneath the flip. But because there's no glass, this makes it a perfect conversation piece because it is, uh, you can see that as an envelope and you can show people that even when it's in the clip, you can open it up and you can show them what it is, or you can easily take it out of the clip. So this is a slightly smaller scale than the trade card. You can see the trade card is a little bit bigger, but you can still see the design. And that's probably the key as you're trying to pick the best frame for your pieces is if it's too big, it's going to cover up the what makes this piece interesting. If it's too small, it's going to look like the picture is wearing the frame as opposed to the frame is wearing the picture. So it's all going to be about the scale, size matters. And so this is just a great, again, an industrial piece, this you know simple uh, tag board envelope with simple black lettering, but that black really pops against the, make, you know, ties it to the black uh, frame and the natural color matches the natural coloration of the inside of the frame. So those two kind of related. Uh, sometimes you need smaller pieces. So I went and found this tiny little, um, tiny little frame here. And that is a Victorian, uh, it, it's technically it's a uh, calling card, but it was never printed on. So a lot of times you'll find pieces of 19th century lithography that were designed for Victorian scrapbooks. So this one doesn't actually have any text on there, but if it had some text on it, it would look fantastic in there. And you can, you know, these types of frames comes in, come in all different types of colors and it is going to be behind glass. So if it's a little bit more fragile, you will be able to protect it a little bit better. And again, simple piece in a simple frame looks fantastic on your nightstand, in your bathroom, in your living room, whatever the case may be. Industrial really is going to be the theme or kind of the idea behind a lot of the uh, items that you're going to be framing when you're dealing with vintage ephemera. You can get art. That's not technically ephemera. Uh, art is designed to stick around. A matchbook cover is not. So that's what makes this ephemera. So again, this simple frame, it even has a little tag in there if you wanted to uh, put something in there. Maybe you have a matchbook from your wedding or from your parents' wedding or something like that, or you have your favorite hotel or your favorite restaurant for date night. You can put something as simple as a matchbook in here and put a little note about the significance of that item. It was your first date, where you were married, whatever the case. What's great to remember when you're dealing with uh, pieces like this is it's an odd size. You are, it's going to be very unlikely without going custom that you're ever going to find a frame designed to hold a matchbook cover. They're just an odd shape. But literally, if you really pay attention to what I did, all I did was I took the picture that was in this frame, flipped it around so I had the white background, and just put it right on there. It's not even taped. It's just sitting on that piece of paper, and then the friction of the cover is holding it in place. So super simple, super easy. You don't need any special tools. You don't even need any special paper. You can just use the paper that was used to sell the frame, and you've got your own backdrop uh, in the final piece. Um, had another. I knew I had another one. I got buried. This is another small piece. This is holding a Victorian trade card, uh, or sorry, a Victorian uh, cigarette card. Um, why do I keep saying Victorian? They're not, they're just cigarette cards. So this one, if you pay really close attention, the card itself is slightly smaller than the window. So again, I needed a backdrop, 
but I didn't like what the white looked like when I put it behind there. So literally what that is, it's the backboard. This black backboard on the opposite side is just a natural color and it, became, it blends almost into the, with the edges of this gray trimmed piece. So cigarette cards are super popular to, they, well, they have so many different themes. They, you can pick one up, you don't have to collect the entire thing. If you've got a dog breed, they've got a, a whole series, multiple series of cigarette cards that are the dog breeds. You've got birds, you've got airplanes, you've got ships, you've got all kinds of different things that people are interested in. This, this happens to be part of my porcelain collection because those are the cigarette cards that I like to collect. You grab one of your favorites or just grab one. Say you like Pomeranians, talking to you, Tippy Winks. You like Pomeranians, then you put your Pomeranian in a little dollar frame and you've got an inexpensive piece of vintage ephemera in a frame that then people can ask you, ooh, what's that? And you can explain to them what a cigarette card is. Now, be being behind glass, it makes it difficult to see the other side. So a couple of the designs that I have, again, go back into uh, clip design. So this is, again, these are just available at the dollar store, the you know, Dollar Tree. Uh, this one has kind of like a slat beadboard type, you know, picket fence design that has the raffia ribbon at the top. That was already there. I did not put it there and still had a clip to put a piece. So this was another one. I had to find the right size to go into it, but I got this sepia tone uh, card de visite, a little CDV, fantastic little piece like that. It looks fantastic. Even though you don't know who this child is, instant relative. Pop that up in your on your powder in your on the counter of your powder room. Everyone will see it, and it's just it makes it look like it was designed to go into the space, and it's literally just a little clip to be able to put the photograph uh, on there. Another style that they had that had the clip, I just really like that, that style. Uh, this one has the corrugated metal in the background with a clip on it and the black wood. So again, this one was, this one is a little bit of an odd shape because it's kind of a standard four by six, but then they put the clip in there. It drank, sank this whole thing down a little bit. I had to find a kind of an odd shape piece to go in there. And this is actually a greeting card. It's a Christmas card. So it's a small Christmas card, but absolutely beautiful that you pick these up. Some people even include them as, uh, if you buy from the vintage community, you might get them as little package toppers. You know, these little, these little pieces of paper, you don't really know what to do with. Grab a dollar frame, put in a clip, and you've got probably the only version of Christmas decor like this of anybody in your friend group because the card itself is over 100 years old. Another style that um, they had at the vintage store or at the dollar store for your vintage is a little bit bigger. But this one I thought was fun because so many of the other ones, particularly the ones with these clips, you all of your pieces had to be portrait designed. So anything that you had that was landscape and design didn't really work as well. So this one, it was really when it sold, it was sold with a picture hanging from this clip and a picture hanging from this clip. So it was, hold, it was sold to hold two four by six photos. I just got rid of the photos and then took this illustrated billhead and stuck it on there. So you've got this receipt from 1898 from Jod Ludwig and Son selling blankets, cashmere, flannels, and carpets. Billheads can be phenomenally decorative. Uh, this one is relatively simple, admittedly, and so it looks great in a simple frame. But even if this were heavily illustrated, it would also look great. Uh, this one, because again, size-wise, this doesn't give me a lot of depth for a piece, so I needed a relatively short uh, piece that was landscape, and so this bill had fit the you know fit it perfectly. I could find dozens of different. I could rotate out these same types of sizes of bill heads. I could put a different one in every week, um, and because there's no glass, it would actually be pretty easy to do. So this one has the string to then be able to hang it. It's just a cool, different way of designing it or of of, of displaying your vintage pieces. Again, nothing special. This is something that already existed at the Dollar Tree and I just picked it up. Uh, the next one is to something just, again, it's a very standard frame, very standard uh, piece, but the piece itself is actually the result of a book that fell apart. And as much as I never like to sell ephemera specifically to have something cut apart, the fact of the matter is as the older the pieces get, the more likely those pieces are going to be damaged. And so what this was, was it was these two great images 
happened to be attached into one piece of paper because it was the inside of a book. As you can see the page numbering in it, it's not even the beginning, it's not even the end, it's just a section of the book. I don't know what the rest of the book looked like. I really didn't read the story. So it's talking about an old excuse. It's not, it doesn't seem to be talking about birds. So burglars. Okay, yeah, it's not, definitely not talking about birds. Uh, so I don't exactly know what this was, but I found it. It had already fallen apart. This was already, this was available by itself. A lot of times you'll find books that are just in really poor condition and you think, oh, you know, what are you going to do with that? Well, look at the book, look, open it up, see if there's illustrations, see if there's images, because this, I mean, this, I could separate this. I haven't chosen to do so, but I could just separate it. The book's already damaged, so I'm not doing any worse. And I would have two pieces that I could get matching frames and put them, you know, they, they once went together. I could make them together again. See, I took the frame apart while we were talking. Now I can't get it back together. Um, you know, you have two of these. You could have them side by side and you've got a pair of art that's going to look great in a hallway. And again, be a piece of art that you're not going to see at your local Hobby Lobby. And there's nothing wrong with Hobby Lobby and there's nothing wrong with Hobby Lobby art. But it's how to utilize some contemporary pieces, particularly inexpensive dollar frames, and getting unique pieces that you're not going to see. No one, you're not going to see at anyone else's home. And when they come to see you, they're going to know, oh, you put some thought into decorating your house and you have stuff that I've never seen before. Uh, so that is a great use of books that have fallen apart. The last thing that I wanted to show is probably the only thing that would take a little bit of forethought, not difficult, but just forethought. It's the only thing that I kind of customized based on what I was doing for the, um, with the dollar store frames. And what this is, is a very simple, you know, very, anyone would think to do this. It's putting a postcard in a frame. Postcards are four by are usually somewhere under four by six, a four by six frame. They fit beautifully. You may need to put a piece of paper behind it because it might have to float a little bit. But sometimes the postcard itself, you want to see what's on the back. Here you go. You buy two frames that match. They're only a buck, buck 25. Then you take out the piece of glass from the second frame, take away the easel that held it together and you just put your piece of art in between the two pieces of glass. I'll have to put a hanger on here or even better, just get an easel and have it set up. There you go. Then you have that in your home, somebody sees it, they're like, oh, what's that? Oh, cool, look, this is postmark 1907. You know, they actually would have information. If you've got trade cards that have the information on the back, it's a, be a great way to show the art on the front and then to be able to read on the back. The cigarette cards, you know, they always will have information on the back. You could do the same thing with these small frames. You use a little easel, you know, something easy that people can pick it up and totally protected. You've got the both pieces in there. Now this one, I also had another piece. You can see it there, the little circle up there toward the top. I did actually attach this to the glass with acid-free um, adhesive. Make sure it's acid-free, uh, you know, you know, depending on value, you may not want to get totally crazy about our archival materials, but it's very inexpensive and easy to find scrapbooking materials like this adhesive. And then that's what helps keeps it centered in the glass so that it, is, it just looks nice. Um, so super simple to do. And all it requires, you just have to buy two frames so you have the two pieces of glass. So I hope you I hope that gives you ideas to be, I mean, obviously the ideas aren't that creative. It's get a piece of ephemera and then go buy a frame, okay? anyone can do that, but you may not think to do it. And you may not think of how cool some of the pieces that you could find would end up going in, into a very simple frame or into some of these clip designs that are popular right now. It makes them super simple to change out, you know, particularly if you are doing vignettes, you know, we get a easel backed frame that has that little clip and you could just rotate this piece every time you change your vignette. You've got a nice tall piece in the background that you can put any sort of variety uh, in front of that. And then, you know, I mentioned that maybe the smaller pieces were too small. Maybe they're not because if you have a vignette and you wanna put something else in front of it, you want to have that piece a little bit higher up. So again, it's just about being creative and making your mind stretch a little bit farther. You don't have to just put photographs in, in frames anymore. You can put vintage ephemera and be unlike any of your other friends. 
So thanks for uh, watching the video. Thanks for giving me your time and thanks for putting your trust in Trusty Huckster. I will talk to you again soon. Bye-bye. Well, show me a sign if you're wishing me to stay. Otherwise, I say goodbye and finish out the day. And that sunrise in the morning and you got nothing to say. Oh, that's when I'll be headed on my way.